If I'm gonna buy ice cream, I go for the weird flavor. I go for the flavor I've never had before. Wow, you know, I've never had saffron blueberry chocolate. And so I'll go for that because I always wanna try something new. But if I'm gonna make ice cream and I'm gonna serve it to people, I wanna go for the flavor that's the simplest. If you can make perfect vanilla caramel chocolate, oh, and strawberry too, that's all you need. Hi, I'm Melissa Clark, and I'm in the NYT cooking studio to make two different kinds of ice cream today. Here's the thing, you can make really delicious things and they don't have to be that hard. They can be so easy and so simple, but sometimes you really wanna pull out all the stops. You want a delicious, best possible version of a dessert. And to me, I think that's really fun. I'm gonna make a shortcut, really easy, no churn ice cream, and then I'm going to make the best salted caramel custard ice cream imaginable. That is your showstopper. You can make amazing ice cream without an ice cream maker. It's really easy. You can use ingredients that you can get in any supermarket, and the flavor is fantastic. I think it's just as good as the fancy kind that you churn. Maybe almost as good. This is really a three ingredient kind of recipe. Dulce de leche, the cream, and then the salt. I think when people think of no churn ice cream, they think, well, it's not gonna be as good because you're not churning it, you're not whipping air into it, it's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be greasy, but there are ways to make fluffy, light, creamy no churn ice cream. It's all about a few little techniques. So to make this salted caramel ice cream, I'm using a can of dulce de leche. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're saving yourself the trouble of making a homemade caramel on the stove. So we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna put nine ounces of this can, which is approximately two thirds of this can, into this bowl. This is not an exact science, this particular recipe. No matter what you do, it's gonna be fine. And I love forgiving recipes like that. Cause this already tastes great. Have you ever just put this in the freezer and eaten it straight out of the freezer? Okay, so that's about two thirds of the can. And so this I'm going to swirl in at the end. And I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of flaky sea salt like one or two pinches. And that's the salted part of the salted caramel. You should taste the salt. You should be able to taste the salt. We're looking for a sweet, salty balance in this recipe. It's not just sweet. And the salt really pulls it back from it being overly sweet. So I have one and a half cups of cream, also adding a pinch of salt to the cream. And this is really important because the whole ice cream needs to be balanced as well. So this has to be a sweet, salty pop. But if you don't have salt, in the ice cream mix, it's gonna taste a little bit flat. Let's see if I can actually not splatter. I have a really bad track record with handheld mixers and splattering. Here's what you shouldn't do. Don't start the mixer and plunge it in. Don't pull it out while it's still mixing. These are all the mistakes. I've made every, every single mistake on camera that you can make with whipping cream and getting it all over the place. I have done it. So you wanna beat this until you have stiff peaks. And this is important because you're gonna thin it out when you mix in the dulce de leche. So it needs to hold its shape at this point. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this. This is really, really thick and dense. So I'm gonna add a little of this. So what I'm doing is I'm just lightening up the dulce de leche so that when I mix it into the whipped cream, it's easier to mix in. Because the aim is to mix in the dulce de leche into this whipped cream until it's really well integrated. And then I'm gonna add the salted stuff, and that's gonna be your veins of just caramel, you know, just those ripples that are so good. I don't do this anymore, but definitely when I was a teenager, I would go in and eat the ripples out of all the ice creams. Fudge ripple, the caramel ripple. My parents get so mad at me. See how it almost kind of looks the same in texture? That way you know it's gonna be easy to incorporate. And so the goal here is to mix it in, but not mix it so thoroughly that the whipped cream loses the air that you've beaten into it. When you make a standard custard ice cream and you put it in an ice cream machine, it's whipping air into the ice cream and that's how it stays buoyant and nice, right? With this, whipped cream is our cheat. Whipped cream has captured the air already and we wanna keep as much of that air intact so that when you put it in the freezer, it still has that nice buoyancy. Okay, now I'm gonna just slowly fold it in. At this point, you can see it's pretty much one color, but it's still fluffy. Like, look how fluffy that is. That We haven't lost the air. So I'm gonna put about a quarter of the cream into this. Salty, about a quarter of this. 
and you're just swirling it just a little bit. Don't even think of it as a swirl. At this point, you're thinking of it as you're breaking up the big blobs so that they're more integrated, so you have little blobs. While you're swirling, if you wanna do other add-ins, go right ahead. Like You could put chopped chocolate in there, like chocolate chips, um, toasted pecans, oh my God. I want everybody out there to make this and put a bunch of weird stuff in here, like yummy, weird ideas, and just put it in the comments. Can you see the swirls? So that's what you're looking for. You know you did a good job when you see that. I'm gonna throw this into the freezer for about three hours, or you know, it'll last in there. It's ice cream, it'll last in there for at least a month or so. When you're making a regular custard ice cream, it's a lot of steps. You have to cook a custard, so you have to cook the eggs, you have to add your cream and your milk, you have to make sure it doesn't curdle, then you have to add your flavorings, chill it down, and then put it in an ice cream maker and churn it until it's just right. And it's fantastic. I mean, this is the ice cream we all grew up with, right? That custardy, creamy, delicious ice cream, but it takes work to get there. Step one of salted caramel ice cream is to make the caramel. So I'm turning the heat on and I'm adding three quarters quarters of a cup of sugar. You can make a dry caramel, which is when you would just let the sugar melt and caramelize. I find that to be riskier. It's just harder to control. So we're gonna do a wet caramel, which gives you a little more leeway. And so wet caramel means you add water to the sugar as it melts. And that really ensures that every single little sugar crystal is completely dissolved. It's harder for it to crystallize and get all grainy. So it's just a little insurance for you. I'm not gonna stir it. I'm swirling. Because you see what happens is sometimes little sugar crystals will get stuck on your whisk, right? And then when you stir it, they haven't quite dissolved and then they cause a chain reaction and then you get crystallization. So don't even, just leave it off to the side and just swirl. The worst thing that could happen to your caramel is you burn it and then you have to start again. But we're not gonna let that happen because we are gonna watch it. Can you see on the side of the pan, it's, there's a little bit of crystallization happening. I am going to take this and I'm gonna put it on top and I'm gonna lower the heat and I'm gonna let the crystals melt. So, okay, not as easy as opening up a can of dulce de leche. I, that is true, 100% true. But at the end of the day, you will have made a caramel and that's really cool. I can smell that it's starting to caramelize at the edges. See how I'm bringing this off the heat? I'm controlling the heat. If I, by lifting it off, I'm cooling it down a little bit, and that way I can assess the color because this is bubbling like crazy. Like, look at that bubbling. Like, how do you even know what color it is? See that? I always like to say that I like to take my caramel to the color of an Irish setter. So it's like a dark red, right? Not black, not, not a chocolate lab, that's too dark but not a golden retriever, that's too light. I love comparing all of my desserts to dogs. So now I've got my caramel base and I'm going to make the ice cream just right on top of this caramel. This is gonna flavor the entire quart of ice cream. What's gonna happen as it sizzles is it's gonna harden because the cold cream is hitting this hot caramel. It's gonna harden into little bits of caramel candy, which are delicious, but don't eat them because you need them for your ice cream. With your whisk, you can feel, in fact, here I can pull some up for you. Look at that, woo, that is candy. Ooh, that's dramatic, that's beautiful. And that's all gonna melt as we cook this with the cream. So I'm just gonna put this on low heat and I'm also gonna add milk and I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. It's just a little bit to bring out the other flavors. I'm gonna add more salt later when we churn it to give those salty pops. And although, okay, so we have sugar in the caramel, but we've cooked off a lot of the sweetness. So we have to add more sugar to the ice cream base. This looks scary. You're thinking, is this ever going to melt? But don't be scared, it is gonna melt, I promise. I'm gonna put this on super low, as low as it goes, and now we're gonna separate the eggs. So, here's the thing about making a homemade ice cream. You use a lot of eggs. You will have a lot of egg whites left over. Keep them, put them in the freezer, I promise. You will find ways to use them. Angel's food cake, little almond mini cakes, financier. There's a cocktail called a rattlesnake, which is really good, and it uses an egg white, and I love it. So I'm going to just mix these up, whisk them together, and then what I'm gonna do is temper them. And what tempering the eggs means is that I'm gonna add a little of the hot cream mixture, which is completely smooth at this point. All of the caramel has dissolved. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this hot cream into the yolks and that tempers them. And what that does is it brings their temperature up without cooking them. And that allows us to put them back into the pot and then you don't get scrambled eggs. 
But here's another thing, we're gonna strain it at the end. So even if you curdle it just a little bit, it's still okay. And then we're just gonna cook it over low heat until it thickens ever so slightly. This looks like heavy cream. Before it looked like milk, and now you can see how thick it is. It looks thick and viscous like heavy cream. At this point, we need to let this cool completely before we even put it in the ice cream maker. So I'm gonna let it cool, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge and I'm gonna chill it, and then you can churn it later. All right, so we have our chilled caramel ice cream base. I wanted to show you, this is the big fancy ice cream maker. This one has a refrigeration compression unit in the ice cream maker, so you don't need to freeze the bowl. So it's expensive, it's an investment. It works really, really well. So if you love ice cream and you really wanna spend extra money on something, you could get yourself one of these. This one works just as well. It churns the ice cream beautifully. The key is the bowl needs to live in your freezer. It needs to be frozen solid so that it's cold enough to churn this well. Now you go do something else for 15 or 20 minutes. And then at the very end, you add your flaky sea salt. And the reason you do it then is because you don't want the crystals to dissolve. You wanna have those pops of saltiness on your tongue, so you need to make sure this is already frozen when these go in. <sighs> okay, it's done. So at this point, it looks like soft serve. And then we're gonna put it in the freezer and we're gonna let it continue to firm up until it's just perfect, beautiful ice cream. And then this goes straight in the freezer. So here we have our ice cream. We have our shortcut and then we have our salted caramel custard based showstopper of an ice cream. Let's first, let's just do a little compare and contrast, shall we? Let's look at the two different ice creams. You can get a sense, you can even see. This one you can see actually that it is more compact. It's denser, this one is a bit lighter. You can see it's a little, it looks a little fluffier and that's from the whipped cream. Let's do the shortcut one first since that's the one that we made first. I mean, just imagine whipped cream frozen but not icy, you know, and denser. It's got a fluffiness on the tongue. Flavor is sweet. It is sweet, it's lightly caramelly. I wouldn't say it has a deep caramel flavor, it has a lighter flavor. But it's really pleasant and yummy and it's just delicious. If I just wanted something really easy to do, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I wanted something that is just, you know, like the pure essence of summer, I would make that in a heartbeat. Let's try this one. I mean, this one's amazing. This one just tastes like, oh, caramel. Intense, this has an intense, Caramel flavor, that classic custard ice cream texture. Like exactly what you want in an ice cream, right? And now let's make sundaes. For my shortcut sundae. I mean, right, why not? It's, you know, it's good. You can make either one, you will be happy either way. And that is the point of this show, is that you have options and you can't go wrong. Shortcut or showstopper, it's up to you.